Uh, give us a wave. <laughs> we have lovely assistance. Thank you. Yes. All right. Okay. So, service design drinks to you, uh, brought to you by, you know, all those of you that have joined us already, mostly women. So, we're happy to invite some uh, men power also in the future. Anybody interested in organizing events with us? Um, so it's Amadea, Eva, Maya, Elena, and Tina that are not here with us today. Some of uh, them might be able to join us online, hopefully. And then there's Anakita and Ari. Um, what we aim to do with these events is basically to bring the community together of uh, UX designers, service designers, all kinds of designers, basically. And are here to inspire with uh, stories and learnings from other people that are working in the area. Uh, <clears throat> we want to be able to bring tools and resources and conversations around how we can upskill and um, how we can basically just share knowledge and experience in an informed environment uh, so everybody can grow together. Mm, today, what we're going to is, oh, yeah. yeah. For those of you on Zoom, just quickly, also, yeah, we, we would appreciate if you kept uh, your audio off today because we don't know what's going to happen with uh, the mic here. And invited to, to send questions over chat. Uh, Kita will be answer, uh, basically uh, leading the questions uh, and getting them answered here from our guests later on. Uh, so, Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, keep your camera on if you don't mind being on with me. Uh, today is uh, what we're going to do is look at uh, or have a conversation about digital disruption <coughs> and how the teleco is then in Slovenia. We're really excited to do uh, that. And then we're going to have a QA after this. So those of you joining us online again. Uh, don't hesitate to just send your questions uh, throughout the presentation. Um, at the end of the event, we're going to have the, the usual self shameless self promotion. So everybody's invited to invite others to whatever they're doing. Um, and we're going to announce the April guests. Today, we're not going to have the backstage online. So those of you there, again, you're missing the drinks already here. Uh, and we're going to try, uh, we're going to see how long we can stay here. I think it's 8.30 for the last time. That sounds so Yeah, 8.30. <laughs> and if we still feel like we want to have a conversation, we move to a place somewhere nearby. So time to uh, start today's session. So I'm just going to quickly introduce uh, Primo Shanilla. Uh, we've known Primo Shanilla now for over 10 years. He was one of the, also the first people that joined uh, the organizing team when we started organizing the Global Service Jams here in Vienna. And uh, he's, I think the first person that I know in Slovenia that uh, actually, uh, assume the role of a service designer in an organization, in a commercial organization. Uh, so we were all waiting for him and we we're excited to basically hear how this is, uh, service design has been introduced. Mm -hmm. And apparently, Ian has a superpower, which is that he can remedy any kind of illness, ailment, uh, with a different specific drink. <laughs> and I'm not really sure what that means, but I'm pretty sure, or if we don't find out through the presentation, I'm pretty sure that those of us here can find out about it after this. So thank you again for having us, and I'm going to hand it over to Imush. 
And I just, we got some people saying that the audio is not the best. Maybe if you guys are near the microphone. Okay. Can you should allow for four people. This was my, my software boss. Is my turn? Yes. So, um, <laughs> no, hi everybody. First, you know, it's a great honor. I love service design community for, for a few reasons, but maybe because of the depth, because I don't think that there is any other field that can bring such depth as service design in the business today. So that's definitely something that I appreciate a lot. And generally, I'm a big fan of um, design as design, of course, not visual design only. So definitely, I think it's a great place to be. And I'm going to be really curious to hear your um, challenging and critical thoughts after this. So that's going to be, that's going to be our takeaway for today. Uh, but first things first, uh, let's check. Can people hear me well? Now let us know if it's not okay. Okay. So, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so thanks for the introduction. I think that's actually true. So I have been uh, gathering knowledge from different types of alcohol for a while. And as the elderly people, we curing people with herbs, you know, I do this with alcohol. So that's that's not actually a joke. I am I am collecting alcohol from all around the world that is based on different herbs. And you know, I really cure all kinds of pains with it. So this is uh, I think if there's a takeaway for you today here, that's that you know that you should start curing yourself with, with alcohol. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, no, but I'm uh, going back to business and music. So uh, I would guess, I would guess that most of you know already what Rio is, and uh, I'm here to introduce it a little bit in the in a greater perspective. And uh, we first have to introduce ourselves as we are part of A1 Group, and this is an initiative, initiative that is pushed by A1 Group and supported by them as something that is going to define the future of telecoms in the world, not only here. As you know, Telecom Austria Group, um, A1, has operations in seven different countries as telecoms, two additional ones as different, different operations, and is part of IMEX, which is the third largest, I think, currently telecom provider in the world. And this is uh, quite an um, exciting innovation initiative uh, by, uh, by, by the group. Uh, so going back to Redo, uh, this is something that is an answer to the current development in the world, and specifically the telecommerce. And I would like to start with a question. Um, how many of you can say that they're excited about their telecom provider? <laughs> Ish. Ish. Okay, oh, we have something. <laughs> Anybody? No? Okay. Ish. We have yeah. two ish out of how many people? Like 17, 18. Ish. Three issues. Okay, okay. And this is this is one of the reasons. As uh, I think I'll put this in the words. I think pretty much that I want to be a satisfied customer of nobody ever. You know, this is not something that, that people that people are doing. Um, and we have to challenge this. Um, the telecom they, they have legacy telecoms have more or less the same challenge. All around the world, or uh, see, um, these are a few of those, are, but not mainly. Uh, first is that it's quite increased technological complexity. You can imagine hundreds of systems that collaborate with each other, talk to each other all the time, so that we can get this basic service that we expect as a utility. And as I like to compare this here now, um, the challenge that is coming for consumers and their perspective here is that. More than 90% of the people of us are going to complain more for half an hour lack of internet than half an hour lack of water. And this is something that uh, we are a utility company and we should embrace this. As a telephone, you know, today, this is becoming like a basic human need. And this is something that I'm not sure that we, the unsatisfied customers <coughs> for this, uh, we appreciate what we are receiving. The, the second the second challenge that we have is leading from this is the limited, uh, limited amount of revenue that we can get from uh, telecom operations you know that us direct people we don't appreciate telecom services a lot 
we expect to have perfect connectivity everywhere. And if we can pay like as much as seven euro per month, we're going to be expecting even more of this. And if you think about what stands behind this, it's quite a lot. And you know, this sense of entitlement is not making the the life of the telecom executive too easy today that, that we have. And of course, as with everybody, the, the cost of service is increasing constantly in the past years, not only because of inflation, but due to the increased amount of uh, capex investment that you know telecoms need to invest in technology to keep it better service and better service. And this is not only 3G, 4G, 5G base station, but this is everything that that makes this running. So it's a lot of that you know, telecoms have to invest. And you know, as you know, finishing with what we started is that the customer satisfaction has been notoriously low throughout. You know, this is not coming from today, but you know, the moment that you don't have like 20 minutes uh, internet home, and then the telecoms become the worst people in the world, and then you know they suck, and then you know why do they even exist, and what the fuck is wrong with them, and why do they even provide this? And this is something that we actually cut a lot more slack to many other providers than we could to telecoms. If you think about it, and I'm the same. I'm um, I'm only four years in telecom, and you know, before this, I was the same. Before I actually understand what the fuck is all these things that that stay behind us. And um, if you put yourself in the shoes of an um, average telecom executive and you have these challenges, what would you do? I'll drink water so we can take water. <laughs> Okay, that's that's a good first step. But then what is the then let's build hypothesis. What would this service design change? No hidden costs. Cool. Design like would this be good for the telecom? Because <laughs> you are in the shoes of a telecom exec. So we have challenges, so we don't have enough money, we have increased investments. Yes, yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a different idea, which only the telecom would like to do, but to join together, build the network together, so split the cost between all of them, and then just charge the same service to you, without competing on the market just by other things. You know? This is something that exists actually. So yeah. that's, a, that's a, oh, okay. <laughs> it is called passive network sharing. Yeah. It is really depending on the different markets. A lot of um, a lot of telecoms share the network, but this is not around all around the network, but more or less the the cells that are not that busy because they don't have such capacity and we demand service, we demand good service and good capacity. Sure. Okay, cool. Uh, there are some ideas that they might be more if we go deep and of course if we do research. And this is more or less something that we we tried by doing. But before we go and lead you through the process, we should go to talk a little bit more on what we have done and what is the result that we have reached um, for now. I want to lead you a little bit, you know, to, to, to understand a little bit better what I'm speaking about. You know, I'm not here as a defender of telecoms. As I said, you know, four years ago, I presented telecoms as well. You know, I was like, what's wrong with them? Why do they keep on uh, treating people like this? But, you know, being part, I started understanding because, you know, as every, every design process goes, you know, we go towards a little bit of advertising. You no, know, I started advertising a lot with telecoms and more or less everything that stays behind it and why the situation is such. So I would like to a little bit of this perspective and uh, if you think about it from a telecom perspective it's talking about started with the wires you know we have this kind of phone that you get to have wires everywhere um, you have to you were putting them from home to home from you were building poles from post to post and then you know even in the beginning you know you were having a person that was physically changing plugging the different lines when someone wanted to make a call and this is the first, you no, know, not the first, but one of the first systems that had to be built, how a telecom should work. Of course, then things changed, a few things got automated, you know, less people started working this manual job, but more people started creating this basic automation that were from years ago. Then you know, followed. Okay. Uh, then followed some devices that might be familiar to some of us. Uh, I'm I'm more and more thrilled to see people that have not seen this ever, and this is this is this says something about me. 
uh, what uh, we'll talk about this later. Uh, and these devices, you know, were the first that uh, were democratizing having a telephone. This was something that, you know, before this first device out of this, having a telephone that you can move and that's without a wire was something that, you know, only um, some special people could afford. And that if the average Joe would never think about having something like this. But then, you know, these devices came and then they were these innovative companies that said, we have to build a network so we can democratize this. We can give people, you know, the ability to walk and talk. And this is, this is something that, is, that, that was wow back in the day. So telecoms developed from this kind of having wires and developing systems with wires to developing a network of different cells that would provide people the ability to walk and talk, which is something that you don't take for granted today. But, you know, thinking about the back day, the back of the day, it was, it was wow. This was like big entrepreneurs that were doing this because the investment is not something that an average entrepreneur can afford. This was something that, you know, actually after seeing the technology, government started building. And this is why main telecoms even today were either are either partly government owned or like were government owned because this was the first networks were built for the government that were building infrastructure for them for uh, military purposes but also for us to democratize our ability to walk and talk. And of course, we have a legend that I hope that I'm going to be able to show you. Can you press the space bar, please? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and that, that, that in this time, it's not about the device, but in this time, dramatically more people started using this. And uh, the, the cell networks got really overburdened. You know, this is the moment that you know, we were playing the snake on these devices for, for a while. You know, the, the, the way that you know Candy Crush became after this, this was this was snake for the device. And, you know, you can hours, you can spend hours playing the snake on this and it was, it was so awesome. <laughs> and the funny part is that, you know, I don't know, uh, I was always thinking about this, but at this time, this was 3310 Nokia, that was supposed to be notoriously uh, the phone that you cannot break. But Nokia had also an unbreakable phone that was actually breaking more often. It was 3210, that was supposed to be unbreakable, but, you know, it was actually breaking more often than 3310. And then you know, continuing the oh, now it breaks. Continuing the evolution, you know, we have all these kind of different devices that started uh, beautiful or not, you know, uh, useful or not. For that time, I would say that they were successful. And um, here, wrapping up this history with BlackBerry, if you remember, they built their special uh, non-traceable network of satellites that you know they were providing this. And unfortunately, it was to be not a really sustainable move that they invested in. But back through the day, this was really big innovation, and you know. Going through all of these devices and all of these um, ages in the in the technology, telecoms were there, and they were building a different technology that would support support these different devices, and they had to adapt from one technology to the next one. And that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that there were people that were using the BlackBerry at the same time, all people were using the 3310 Nokia, and telecoms had to have the infrastructure to support the different devices and the different ways of using services. Which, as you can imagine, from a technological standpoint, is not too easy. Uh, just think about, we take for granted that it's super easy for <coughs> us to just go on the highway, drive at 130, and uh, expect to watch Netflix with the highest quality. And the telecom should provide this. But if you think about what stays behind this, it's like not only the chain of, of, of cells, there is the, the physical infrastructure of it, it's all around the technology that needs to manage this. How do you go from one cell to the other one without any condition? How does the next cell know that you're going there? How do you, how does this next cell know that you have paid for your service and that it should provide you with the service? All of this information is something that is rapidly happening. We expect it. And now it's, we expect it with even better quality and better quality. And this, uh, these different systems that were supporting different devices, different behavior, different behavior that we have, different way of using was something that you know we take for granted. And this means one thing for telecoms. They have done um, a really amazing job in leaving the technology behind. Something that you know I've heard different designers say, this is that the best interface 
is no interface. And all of this technology is behind. They really did a great job. But somehow they made it poorly. And what was poorly is that the customers were not satisfied and they are still not satisfied. So, how come you know you have these companies that invest so many billions in providing such a service in such a democratized way that every single person can afford it? And it's not even a big chunk of their expenditure today, and they are still not satisfied with their service. It's a it's a question of whether is it really the no interface, the best interface. Because it is invisible infrastructure of thousands of cells that are supporting us, you know, to have all of these kind of powerful devices in our pockets and get access and get, you know, the the everything, the tool that we need to be better people. And um, there is a quote here um, that technology becomes truly really useful when you don't notice it anymore, when it becomes boring. It's true. Our devices are useful. But if you're a telecom, would you be happy the way that you're not appreciated? The way that people appreciate you today? Do, do, do you, um, as, a people, as people that don't work in telecoms, think that there is a better way for this to be done? And this is asking these questions for more or less where we where we started with everything. You know, this is this is something innately innately wrong with, with the way that we, we we appreciate what we are giving. And going back to, to the to the main challenges that we have currently, we have to resolve this for the sake of keeping all of this technology, all of these benefits that uh, telecoms give to people democratized and available, we gotta we have to resolve these challenges. You know, telecoms needs to make money so that this is successful. This is one of the main reasons, main uh, main rules of the capitalistic environment. You know, if something does not earn money, it's not going to be sustainable. And this is we can see it even in the social environment. The best social enterprises, the best social causes are social enterprises. They're like 50-50 for profit and not for profit. And we see that this is the way that you validate if something is having enough value. Because it's easy to create a social enterprise for goals if you get funding, you, know, you just do things. But you know, these social social enterprises figured out that they have to be having fun. And this is also the way that they're changing. And um, trying to solve all of these questions, of course, we started with the project and um, um, we wanted to first see what were the key memos that telecoms miss. And not on the technology part. I say, I just shared that, you know, I, I'm fascinated by everything that is happening in the current world in terms of technology that we do not see the average person, even the even the technology geek, if they're not being specifically around telecom, they have no idea what, what it goes into this, how much R&D is going and how much infrastructure is going. Uh, but we want to tackle more the human side. And as a survey designer, I would guess most of you here, uh, I think that the most interesting part and how, how can we make this better? And we need to see where, as I said, telecom is wrong. What is the memo that they missed? And uh, after, of course, meticulous research and uh, approaching different points of data that Primoz uh, is going to share in a little bit, first thing that we saw is something super basic. We people like to be in control of our lives. Telecoms not give us control. Telecoms are taking away control from us, and they are signing in people for two years, three years. They want to make sure that the money. The, the, the cash flow inside is going to be coming for a while after that. And I understand why. This is the technological part. All of these investments, we have to be able to plan our business for the next five, 10 years, which is big investment. It's all this task, and you want to have some security. And they said that no, the customers should pay for this. And this is something that we definitely decided that we have to tackle. That this is something that is aiding a lot for this. For what I asked in the beginning is for the average person to not be satisfied with the with the service. That is actually, if you think about it from an evolutionary perspective, it's so awesome. If you believe that how the service is developed, you know, from pure evolutionary perspective, it is so fucking awesome. And it's it's something that you know I still struggle to understand, you know, how how telecoms did not land this point that it is so so awesome. And then the second thing is the expectations as we had this input before this. Um, we 
I told that everything is going to be fine. And we are told that um, from a telecom person's perspective, the way that the service is developed is that this is this ideal behavior that people should have. And if they do something else, they're retards. They should not make a mistake. And if they make a mistake, we'll punish them. We want an additional, additional penalty if they, don't, if they forget to pay. We want in this, we want in that. And for this reason, you know, we are ensuring that we gain as telecoms more revenue. But you know, these are the small things that are putting people on daily level. You know, this is something that you know can whether you're going to pay 15 or 30 euro, perhaps might not be that big of a difference. But if someone penalizes you for something with two euro, it's a big pain on it. And this is something that is not aiding you to have expectation. And then I don't expect people to act in a certain way. And they say, like, okay, for example, you know, if you're driving, if you're changing uh, different base stations. Perhaps you should uh, have this kind of usage, and if you have more, it's going to glitch for a second. It's not really a penalty, but this is the behavior that they expect from you. And that if you don't follow these rules, then you know you're not satisfied with the service because you no, know, it glitched. And then from Telegram's perspective, if you ask an uh, engineer, they say, okay, "What would you expect? We have this kind of capacity of this cell. We're switching to this one and this. Cell. What did you expect that it's going to break?" And communicating this thing is not really easy for the average person. You know, we don't want to know in details what is our specific uh, limitations and what we want to do. However, we want to see how we can have realistic expectations. This is uh, also my geekish side, so in that, I, that I'm pretty keen on understanding why we behave the way we behave and why uh, we do not behave according to the expectations that were set. And this is more or less how everything, everything started. And having these two things, we really try to understand where we fell. These were the things that we built our plant on, on the missing expectations and giving back control to people. And with this, uh, before I give back to Primush, uh, having this background, I guess that you might have seen our first TV ad, but I'm gonna show it again and I would like to ask you then if you so for to ask yourself if it, if it makes more sense now. No, we, we need some we need some sound. Do we, do we stop the mic? Wrong. <laughs> speakers. Now it's time for imagination to think how that's going to look like. How it's going to have expectations to control with the same thing. We do have actually a competition with our music festival for young musicians to create. Uh, it works uh, online, it works for them. That's very good. It works for them <laughs> for us. <laughs> Yeah. Play for people online. Maybe you could turn on the value. Uh, like a yeah. Let's start. 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 Let's
fire. Got a couple busty brothers who don't ever go outside. They ain't never got no signal and they never with the boys. But they posted in my comments talking trip like they the pros. Let me run it back. One, two, three, four, five. Brothers that I couldn't care about, not even if I tried. They got my foot up in their mouth, they call them more than pride. And if you're in my city, you might just swallow the nine. I'm a lot I'm busy, brother, hey. I'm a lot I'm busy, brother, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Če hoče živeti po svoje, je Ridu pravi mobilni ponudnik za te. Ridu, v tvojih rokah. So, ok, we see it, what, what, what's the... We're not going to go into the depths of what's, what you see and what does it mean, but basically what we wanted to create here is, uh, um, is a story about how, uh, even though there are expectations uh, driving you towards one thing, you can, you're free to do your own thing. You can go different direction, you can do whatever you want, because you have the power, you have control, and when you have control, you have power to make your own decisions. So that was... Uh, you know exactly how you know framed it. We have control on one side that we are releasing from our hands because we believe this is the right thing. And the, on the other hand, we have the expectations uh, from people that are just crazy, checking, asking, but is this for real? Or is it unlimited? Uh, when do we, do we stop the speed? Is it, where, where, where is the trick? Where is the trick? They're going, we're just checking the, um, statistics of the website today and the most very bizarre data. The most viewed page was terms and conditions. <laughs> People were just not, probably did not believe, but is this for real? What, where is the trick? Because we, or the telecom industry, taught the people that, uh, yeah, yeah, we're saying something, but there is a catch, right? What, what we want, to, what we are about, there is no catch. No catch, we are, open, we're transparent, we're giving you control. You want to come with to us, it's super easy. You want to stop, it, it's super easy as well. So that's, that's the whole thing of, of, of tackling control and expectations uh, at the same time, but not just in communication, but basically doing it every single time and with every feature, every piece of communication, every uh, experience that you have with us. So, um, if you, if you can imagine, yeah. um, what's, what's, what's it all about? Um, instead of focusing on, on, on technology, <laughs> the, <laughs> mic follows. the mic follows magically. Awesome. Um, not, the first thing that we said when we started the project, uh, we said, yeah, great. We have we have the possibility to create something new. We have the possibility to to move away from from all the legacy. And of course, there was an investment connected with new technology that enabled us to do it. But surely you can uh, fuck it up as well if you don't do it right. So the first thing that we did was a bit anthropological research with uh, um, with with. Uh, Jasna from Karant visited 82 households around Slovenia and, we, and spent more or less four hours with each one of them um, and understanding not just the relationship with technology, but basically how they live, how they educate their kids, how they manage finances. Uh, who is, the, is there a finance minister or is the, the, the accounts are shared or not shared between uh, spouses? All of the things that we then uh, took and, and used in the design of, of, of the service. So what we would like to share today is basically uh, how, um, how we tackle this, because of course you, you have this opportunity and what do you do first? What's, you know, what's, uh, where, what are the steps? And, and um, the first thing that you need to do is create the team and I uh, pass my words to William because uh, he is the one that created the team. So to explain us a bit how 
how he chose this crazy bunch here. I cannot give from my thing, but you know, I really, I really believe in people, and uh, I have really always have been thinking that someone often people say that this person is bad or they did something bad and so on. But you know, if we always take a look at it from a perspective of a single person, this person was always good. It was just something else in their mind, even if we talk about criminals and so on. And around people, I think I cannot feel that, you know, I'm the best person that knows people. But what I know is that, you know, if it doesn't work with uh, creating empowering, empowered people that are able to make their own decisions and that we align on a higher level than it is just about business and it's just about job, then the work is not going to feel right and then everything that we do is going to be average. And as my team knows, I'm not a big fan of average. And that's not something that I think the worst thing that can happen is the average. And that, you know, even if we fail with something bad, we might have better learnings than you know, if we strive for average. So average was never something that, that we did. So um, for sure, as you can, um, I mean, if you know the team, and I guess you know some of them, because Slovenia is not that the best uh, of all of, all of the people, all of, all of the people that we have, you know, we always ask the questions about how things are working and you know why this is like that. You know, I you know the, the average question. I, I guess I'm speaking to such an audience, but I don't know what should be my language. Should I uh, is or have all of you done you know collective research, you know, asking many whys and you know uh, what is the background, but you know, all of all of the people are curious, and this is something that you know I think innately people people is helping people learn more and be better. And I have a I have a say that uh, it's not really fully great, but I really like it. Is that uh, uh, being certain of your own opinions is always illusory. So if you're on whatever topic, if you're that certain in your opinion, then you're usually, let's say, prone to be illusional about, about your opinions. And this is, I have seen in these people from different places and in different ways, is that you know, we have to challenge ourselves and challenge our opinions. And this, Sometimes it's not easy, you know. So the team is built in a way that uh, uh, they should collaborate in a way they are empowered. But this comes with a lot of expectations, as you can imagine. And I, I know that this is also not really easy for a team like this. Uh, I know that they hate me sometimes. No. <laughs> <laughs> this felt like uh, uh, next time we're green if you're kept here against your will. <laughs> <laughs> This is felt a little bit like this, but definitely I I'm I don't even consider failure failure because I see it's uh, one of the third point includes failure. It really is not fair. It is really important when we have something to see it as as feedback and get it as soon as possible. There is in corporations uh, many things are seen too late to be fixed and too late to learn from them. Sometimes, and of course, it's bad, you know, if you don't do anything great from the first time. Of course, it's going to create more, more work for your teammates, for your boss, for your everybody. So, you know, this is the only way that we do something. So I, I really believe this, and I really have tried to, to, to choose a team that are willing to challenge themselves and that are willing to, to create new things based on, the, uh, on true feedback. And by true feedback, we mean, of course, all different stakeholders and not just doing something because we know. And this was really needed because we literally started from a black sheet of paper. We don't talk about telephones. We literally are separating that just started from scratch and we have to create a new path. And if we create a team that is from existing telecom people that have been in telecoms for a while and that know everything about it, it's for the result is kind of known. We know where you're gonna go. So we made the balance because we needed expertise. We have also people that have been in telecoms for a while, but we have many people that are coming out of telecom industry and that are just asking the question, but why this is working like this? What is that like that? Because as I showed in the beginning, there is a lot of legacy in telecoms. There is a lot of systems that are intertwined. Just think about. What happens if 170 systems working together and then you want to change something in one system? You know, there are people that are challenging seeing how things are working and so on. And if you ask a telecom person that is working in telecoms technology for 10, 15 years, 
they're going to tell you what you can do and what you cannot do. So that's exactly what we want to change, especially the things that we cannot do. And this is why we need this balance and this kind of environment to challenge the status quo and start from it to be able to challenge her. And I guess that's all I can say from the team. It wrap it up by thanking them every opportunity that I can because I'm feeling a bit privileged to be able to work with them. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have the team. Uh, some some joined before, some joined later. Uh, what do you do after that? Okay, it's not. It wasn't exactly the. I mean, it was many streams at the same time. But what I'm going to talk next is uh, the brands. So it's 2023. How do you start basically challenging brands? You know, there are so many brands, there are millions of brands around the world. And you are here and say, yeah, we have a brand, we are going to be this different type of It's you really, this is why also it was good that uh, uh, both Matisse and Mili that are uh, colleagues here, that's, that are very much involved in, in communications as well, they were outsiders. So we knew that. You know, Airbus is not something the most exciting thing that you can imagine. Once you, if you, so you stay here in for five, ten years, you start looking at it differently. But I, in the end, I, I mean, in the beginning, I, I was joking with everyone, asking me how is work. Said that I'm starting to understand why we all love to hate our Airbus. I just was on the side of here. Yeah, I was hate this. Then it's understood, okay, again, yeah, this is how all of this is basically if you have a, in my mind, probably it's wrong, but you start you, uh, building a, a cottage to put, I mean, uh, gardening tools in, then this expands to a skyscraper because technology changes, investments are huge, uh, the, the, the innovation is crazy, so everything's a bit wobbly, so things don't work. Then you acquire a fixed operator, it has another wobbly building, and then you start, <laughs> you, you try to connect this, and it's a fix. Yeah. It's not a year. That's it. It's not a year. Okay, so by the way, by the way before we were uh, meet, we were uh, in Ridu, we were called Digital Telco. That's the most, <laughs> the most, you know. Uh, uninspiring thing that you can imagine, but uh, we knew that it was a big opportunity. But what we did know is uh, we had some keywords going through the process. First of all, getting control back to people. We're challenging, definitely. So we, we uh, also people said from inside the company, you know, we're going to fight for the same people, but go ahead. It's okay. You can trash us as well if you need to. They're not happy for it, but you know there was this this vibe of you know uh, we are we are coming and we are disrupting the place. Um, very important point is putting humans in the center. We don't even want to call them users, customers, consumers, just people. You know we we don't want to use this terminology because it's in there. If you want to understand every moment that we're dealing with people, we're not dealing with a telco customer. And <coughs> the other thing is we want it to be truly useful. You know, the telco is not exciting. Nobody wants to deal with the telecommunications company. If something works, it's just there, it's just electricity from the, you know, coming from the, uh, from the wall. You just notice it when it's not there. And then you, your pistol, um, but it's we we are, we know that people don't want to engage with us, and it's okay. We are not looking for in-app gaming gamifications and uh, things to stay in the app. No, it's a tool to make things that in the physical world. It's not don't stay on the screen. You just do what you need to do, and then you know what happens. So this is how uh, this was the inputs and many many rounds of naming and, and uh, um, brands, uh, brand identity design and all of that. We we finally came to the right, the right board, the right name, 
and as as um, it's really hard. I mean, to name a brand, that's you know, it's going to convey the, the right message. It's going to be the, the right vessel to convey the message that you want to say, basically, because as we know, a brand is um, just a collection of meanings that you put through time. So if you're putting the, the same meanings consistently, it's going to mean something else than from the beginning. So if you think about Puma, you know, maybe you think first about sneakers then uh, the for Apple and so on. So it's about consistency, but also about the right messaging. And why 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 are you do? What do is because um, we, we like the do think there because it's a tool we want to enable you to do stuff um, and also the, the meaning of making something again but better so it's not about redoing uh, because it failed i mean in a way maybe yes but we want to convey that this is something different it's better it's it's something that uh, tell you how is it supposed to be basically and uh, at point, it's great if it's if you can use it as a verb let's google that you know uh, so if the name of the brand can can or uh, you know if you are using flick flick me get a table of this kind of things so it's, this can come into Real, real language, let's see, this is a big stretch, but okay. Um, so then we have the name, but before the name, we, uh, we define the core values. You know, what is that? What are the things that are completely differentiating from all competitors? Something that does not, that does not change, but it is true to us. Coming from the team, and it's something that has to be uh, reinforced every time that you're in touch with this brand. First of all, freedom. Freedom is a means as, as a consequence of you having, uh, having all the control in, in the world. So with us, you come, you go, you pause, you you add, you subscribe, you don't, you cancel very very easily. So that's. That's the first point that uh, has to come across. Humane, it's, it's about understanding people. It's about understanding what are the needs, understanding what is behind, understanding that people are not, we are not uh, rational beings, but we are acting in the moment. It's all about context. So uh, something that needs to come across. So one of the things how, maybe how this uh, brand value is coming to life is with uh, support agents usually what happens is uh, there is kind of a support agent persona that the support agent needs to kind of uh, become and also some agents were coming to us but what is the persona like what how are we talking and we said no it's it's you don't, you know, it's how you communicate to, back to a friend. Be uh, open, open, I mean, explain, be, but be yourself. Don't, don't be someone else. That was, that was uh, kind of a, a way to, to go. Uh, third of all, they're definitely challenging. We are very different. We're not afraid to go over the board. So we go to, to be provocative. Uh, and to challenge also the status quo, how it's, we are not happy how seeing what's, what's happening. So we are opening things uh, that maybe others would not dare to. Uh, of course, in the, kind of in the constraints of um, advertising chamber rules, uh, everything that has to be you know, enclosed, but we're not afraid to expose things like they are. And last but not least, um, understandable. So this is, there was a big discussion because we were talking about simplicity. And sometimes if something simple is not, it's, it's simplicity is basically just a tool. It cannot be your goal to be simple. 
the goal has to be to be understandable. So simplicity is minimizing number of screens, but our way is let's add one or screen two more just to make it understandable. So this is the point. People must understand the complexity. I mean, we make, we have to make it a complex thing simpler, and sometimes it takes maybe some more explaining. And uh, again, under this, absolutely no technical jargon. For example, we're not saying incoming calls, but we say calls a call when someone calls you. Something is completely yeah, it takes small words, but it's uh, completely unequivocal. The that you cannot misunderstand it. Basically, that's that's the point. Okay, uh, that's the brand. We have the brand. We have the name. We have the campaign. We have uh, we we teased the hell out of you know uh, people. We were doing a, a nice digital teaser campaign. I mean, it was really, really uh, probably noticed that, but then it's the moment. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, there was, this is just part of the, part of the, the communication. Uh, there is, I mean, there could be another talk uh, that Matisse really could make just about this, because it's really super interesting. Uh, there's a lot of digital behind, it's a lot of, New things, basically, basically that we that uh, they drive, they drove and they tried, and we did. Um, so it was it was quite quite successful as well. Uh, one of the things that was really uh, innovative was leveraging uh, influencers uh, and, and uh, making content on a brand community site that was closed just for registered users. So this is where they, they were also the first to know what they do is two weeks before everybody else. So this is how we, we have 8,000 people registered um, because all of these people that registered, this is one thing, but another thing that is maybe uh, a first is I think, I don't know if I'm, I'm probably not mistaken, I don't know if there is a brand that stood behind the cause causes like uh, um, gay parenthood, like uh, uh, body shaming, like I don't know, being openly gay, all of that. These were the people that were speaking on this podcast. So this was basically from the get-go, we said we are we are here. I mean it's we are inclusive and I don't see any other other way to launch a brand nowadays. This is how we have to have to be, not act, just be. <clears throat> and uh, talking about transparency, uh, we of course we do stuff. You fuck it up. Uh, there was a kind of misleading post on Facebook about the prize-winning game, and usually you know what happens. Yeah, send us a private message, double uh, let's talk, talk about this. Uh, we said, no, let's expose it. Let's stand behind it and say, yeah, we said, you missed up, we messed up. And this is how we are. We, said, we say, sorry, of course, we send some, uh, so, I mean, uh, we are sorry, gifts, but we did not kind of, well, we did not swipe it under the rug. That's the point, and this is really, I think I was really proud when I went out. Okay, um, yeah, as I, meant, as, as I mentioned, we have the campaign, we have the brand, we have the, all of these expectations building up, and then the moment of well, how, how is the experience for real? Are these people for real? Are they just talking? Is, is you know, what's behind? So how do you basically deliver on this brand promise? This, are the, this was the question. Um, and it's, again, case studies, right? It sounds, it's, it looks super like thoughtful and it's, we asked and we were uh, uh, sat down and said, okay, we need to, we need design principles to do this. But to be honest, this 
four principles were, were developed later on out of the work that we did uh, intuitive. It's, but it was because of the team, because people involved, this is how it's, it's uh, we said, of course, yeah, this is how, how we do things. And it's intuitive, intuitive work, but uh, it's not how it looks like it, uh, for this full disclosure anyway. Um, first, the first one is uh, we wanted to do things that are uh, create experience this million. So we will, uh, you know, we all have this limited expectations. You see one full experience, uh, and then you expect it to see it everywhere else. Uh, you know, you Google something, you, you get it immediately, and then you get pissed off when uh, when search engine on a company page just does not work. So how come this is there? I mean, it's possible. So. Um, the expectations are liquid, the expectations are high, and also we are learning behaviors with Netflix, with Revolut, with all of these best services that we're using in the world. So we wanted to make it familiar by applying these standards and this way of procedures, way of uh, interacting with, with the service that are already expected to be, to be there. Another is confidence. So we want to make you feel, feel confident to, to do everything by yourself. Because there is no one to, I mean, of course, there's four agents, but we wanted you to be confident that you're doing the right things when you're on the right path. Of course, there is support if you need it. But we, in order to empower you, we uh, put some guardrails in place. So there's a new, for example, I will show you later. There's a new concept that you click for the first time in the app. We will just show you a pop-up. Hey, this is about that. And this is how you use it. And this is where you get more information. So just to make you feel more secure in user. Of course, yeah, I was talking about, about the fact that we are not fun, uh, that we are not looking for for a big uh, engagements in the app, but um, we still wanted to celebrate this or create this micro moments of joy. I mean, this, maybe this is the too big of a word or when, of course, again, when something doesn't go right, uh, to say, okay, we messed up. Sorry, please try again. And I just have a quick question. What do you guys do? I don't know what you do. <laughs> so it's very hard for me to follow. But uh, everybody, what's your what's your main business? Just in we are a telecom in the app. Telecom in the app. Yeah. Okay. And that means that you are like a telecom. Island. You have you, you can you can buy, subscribe, manage everything from uh, from your app. Okay. No shops. No. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, but that, that was good. There's so much building. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, being of value, this, this was the last one, but the big one, you know, it's the tool. Um, what's, what can you do with it? It's not uh, every tech co company has a support, support depth. That it's basically useless. You can check your usage. Nice, but you cannot do anything. You want to check your. I mean, you want to change uh, <coughs> data. You have to go to the shop. You want to, uh, I don't know, change your plan probably in a, or you have to move. You do have to do something physically. So this is beyond. Our app basically is the service. There's everything is inside. But let me be more, more concrete. Right. Um, okay, confidence. This is about creating you these moments of confident, confidence that uh, you know what you're doing, even if there's a concept that's completely new to you. So when you, this is the um, home screen that you see in the app. Basically, you have things that you can manage so mobile lines balance is for special special services 
10 payments and so on and so on and so on. So balance is, is, is uh, let me put it simply, balance is what you need when you want to vote for Eurovision, these kind of things. Because we wanted to get rid of this, but uh, there is still, this is the legacy telco things that you can do by text, but we didn't want to have the shots at the, at the end of the building cycle. So everything is upfront. So it's like Netflix. You subscribe on the fifth, the next time that you are charged is fifth, which is always fifth. You go to Rome, roaming, uh, they either use it, use money from this 24.50 uh, or, or you, when this stops, you cannot spend anymore. So there's no, there's no uh, 6th of Jan or 6th of uh, April surprise. What is this charge? What are these two, two euros? Why? Why did they do that? We want this is, we want complete control. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I was talking about desirability. This is when we want to create this micro moments of, you know, like maybe put a bit of smile in your face when, when you see something. Uh, and when you achieve, maybe when you activate your mobile line, when you uh, subscribe, when there are these things that you want to celebrate with you or celebrate again, it's a big word. But, you know, why not? Basically, why not? This is about creating this connection because um, when you don't have any more the shops, you don't have this human connection with someone that can understand you, that can, you know, that can uh, guide you, it can explain things, can be friendly, give you give a smile, you know, this kind of interaction is, is gone. So how to create these things without it? Uh, but things also don't always go, go to plan. What happens when, when there's something wrong? It's a fair screw. And it looks like this. Oops, sorry. I messed up. And, and I mean, I know it cannot be, it cannot be possibly angry. And, and um, big disclaimer, this is not yet uh, in the app right now, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you the future uh, because, yeah, because uh, real life, I'm going to talk about it yet. But yeah, this is uh, kind of a preview. Um, another thing that we, we wanted to, to do is never have a dead end. Never, should, there should never be a moment when a user is completely lost and cannot do anything or does not know what, what to do. And one of those things is also the uh, support, you know, designing the end of the subscription when you want to quit. Um, and there is a amazing quote by, I think, is it HubSpot or one of those guys, they say, we want to create the, this engineering procedurally easy, but emotionally hard, you know? Just click, you're, you're gone. But this is where our UX designer was really inspired. And he said, you know what? OK, we will tell you what you're going to lose, blah, 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 when you cancel this line. But as well, you have to copy this kind of haiku, you know, when you go. So red button looming, I press account gone. And I mean, it's a cute thing. It's something that yeah, you do. There, it doesn't change your mind, but why not? And in the end, there is a last screen on the, on the right. Um, it's there are no hard feelings, you know. Thank you for being with us. <coughs> Even if you were with us for a couple of months, you know, there are no hard feelings. You're always welcome to come back. This is the feeling that you want to, to give. It's, it's kind of ending on a fine note. And uh, the tool part, so being of value, we focused on, on creating this um, um, kind of five or probably there, I mean, there are many more scenarios what you can do with your mobile line, basically. 
you can activate really quickly with us you can come with us it's, it's very easy you can even uh, have a free trial it is free for real without credit cards without anything so after two weeks when this expires and don't do anything there's nothing happens it's not one of those again tricky things that it's good for maybe providers but uh, we don't want to play the game um, and this is also one one of you know, how many cases of free trials are in mobile uh, providers but read that google is doing that with google five but i find it's really you know something that is transferred maybe from just digital services you know netflix maybe this kind of things so you know if you want to test try it, you will see for yourself uh, transferring mobile number by yourself no shops nothing easy do it yourself we it's a bit of a anxiety inducing process because you don't know when this is going to be to happen but we are guiding you to, to do this uh updating accounts and and also at the end this is also coming so it's adding a mobile line for someone else, maybe your kid and so on. And the end products. I mean, here product in the sense of what, what do you, how do you manage everything when the reality hits? You know, we, we create this amazing product, uh, amazing concept. You have everything there, the Figma is full of screens everything looks amazing but maybe the the what comes out is not always the full scope because of many reasons so um, also it's to be i mean there are things that maybe don't work always as, as supposed to be because we are at the beginning there are things that are not uh, we have to, we I think we did how many 10 12 builds in a couple of weeks so 12 new versions of, of the app always updating to, to uh, because obviously there are some bugs um, so how to manage that here is where basically a very good support is uh, is what saves you um, but it's not there are no call centers so uh, call center is another thing that <laughs> we love to hate that because you're always on hold and always crappy music and always they're lying to your face saying that your call is important. I mean, really. <clears throat> so we wanted to create something else. So it's basically uh, first we want to give you the, the opportunity to solve the problem by yourself. So that means if you are around um, balance, these things how to vote for Eurovision, um, you can type, you can tap on this little a little um, light bar to top right and you will get contextual FAQs about specifically that part so what I'm going what I want to say is that this FAQ is as contextual to whatever you are in the app so they change so if this doesn't if this doesn't work if this is not enough uh, you can go to ask in Russia on the top right and you will have a live agent on chat inside the app that is available 24 7 no questions asked so on, on sunday at three o'clock there is someone at the computer you know uh, they're available if there is anything to, to solve uh, this is actually a, a good experience that we had when we were still acquiring people for uh, support so the team was not full yet so we all volunteered for for some night shifts so uh, and it's i have to say it's a uh, there is some kind of adrenaline in this kind of expectation okay how can i help but will i be able to help how, how can i do this what's what's going to happen so it's uh, it was really cool to for us to also the rest of the team to get this experience um of course there's the the agent cannot help if the agent doesn't have kind of a 360 view of uh, who you are where is 
how is the system defines you know what are the mobile line doing uh, how are the payments all of that so all of the history of, of chats before so you can you don't have to explain every time you know my name is this uh, my problem is that then you transfer it to another person yeah my problem my name is this my problem is that so you, you get tired just doing that here our agents don't don't need to do that because we have everything everything there um and not this this is the support part but also there is this is not not all uh we also created a brand community site this is a fancy name for a forum but forum is very limiting <laughs> so if you say forum you just you know the picture in your mind is not very exciting but we wanted this to be much more than just a forum for geeks we wanted to be this as a direct uh, channel to, to reach us and to close the loop so whatever's happening whatever problem whatever idea whatever feature there is please just reach out and someone will, will ask um, but not only this it's also peer-to-peer -peer support and this is already happening we already have five so-called super users that are completely are super into the brand and they are helping other other uh, users by themselves by their own initiative and uh, answering like they would they would be part of review basically so this is this happens this happens in in this in brand communities but this happened much quicker than i, I really imagined so um, it's really good to see um again yeah, another one is connecting with others obviously but not in a in a cheesy way <laughs> it's not uh you know this is also why we didn't we don't like the word scoopnost because it has these connotations so a scoopnost community but in slovenia has a maybe other uh, other ways other meanings so uh, that's why we call it relaunica relaunica re, re, do relaunica and why Relaunica is because it's uh, a lab is too clinical, the Lanica is too messy, Relaunica is something in between, uh, plus it's a place. So you can come to Relaunica, be there, you know, social life, whatever you want, and then you leave. So it's not a scoop, not it is kind of a set. But okay, this is maybe you know, uh, something, something that's not so relevant, but yeah. This is uh, uh, this is where basically we launched the brand. Uh, Famichi, I don't know if some some of you know these are pod podcast hosts. Um, they show they shot five uh, episodes that were exclusively available on on the brand community before before uh, posting on the, their own. So there's this is how we, we got 8,000 people registered and also a lot of engagement on different topics. And not every brand was, was there. Um, another thing that we, we want to use it for is, is gathering feedback and ideas, uh, finding bugs, uh, really helping us build this app to, to be as best as it, as it can be. So really involving people to be to be with us on the journey. Uh, so we already have a bug hunting rice in game. So this was when we <coughs> that we, we, we found found lots. Um, and this is what we're going to keep doing. Uh, collecting feedback basically. I have a question. I saw a couple of times the uh, term AC. Uh -huh. What is AC? What a nice question. <laughs> <laughs> AC is something that is uh, for us, it's, it's a big opportunity uh, because it's uh, basically it's an electronic SIM card. Usually the SIM cards are physical that you have to put inside, you know, here, but new phones. Uh, have this <coughs> that are already uh, built in the phone. 
So basically, you can have an eSIM without any physical physical SIM cards. That means if you have uh, an eSIM, you can have two numbers on the same phone. Can I, can I build on this? Sure. This is what allows us to be able to provide you with service in two, three minutes without moving from your couch, without going, putting anything physical. This is something that you, know, you can allow us to <coughs> give you a little, whatever, whatever. So this is like the new technology that you mentioned that enabled you to yes. go for the digital. That other legacy telecoms still do not understand what's other than a little bit and how they do it, they even sell it. You have to go to the store, you have to pay, you have to pay your tax that you know additional SIM card and so on. Um, then they give you a QR code that is printed on a on a piece of paper and then you take it and you scan it. But this yes. is not nice. <laughs> this is exactly what I mean. This technology is great, it's awesome, it's allowing to do now to free so much, so much freedom to people, which like they're going to just you know kind of miss the point. You know, they're using it, it they have it, but the process they use it, they struggle to utilize it and see the benefit of it. And I see that you know they I don't know, either they do not see the benefit of it, or you know, something else in the latest technology as I shared before is. Obstruction, but you know, going to the store and buying an AC that you know that is coming to a device. It's interesting that that's not something you went for uh, in the promotion, right? Because oftentimes new brands or new products they mm -hmm. promote the new technology, like you want to get hooked up on that, but you didn't even mention it. Like we you even hear it in the presentation, I mean, it's in the message, you know. It's we, interesting the, not to put that forward. What does an ECU mean to you if you see past it and see a new board that says we have an What is this? No, for you, that question. It depends. Depends? Leading to having to the market, of, for example, of people that are traveling from abroad, not in Europe, mm -hmm. right? Only, but people from out of, out of Europe, mm -hmm. it's really easy then to potentially switch to your network here. Mm -hmm. oh. You, you could have taken a different route, just as what I'm saying. You have to understand, as Primo said, and as it's a good saying in startups, you know, if you're not ashamed of your product, first product, then you launch too late. <laughs> you have to understand that you know, we have a long product roadmap that you know, won't be implemented. We always see feedback from the customers, as Primo said, in the rounds of many things that they would like us to see. And this is why we, we are already certain that you know, whether it's something that people would love. You know, we gotta do this step by step and you know, make sure that whatever we have is fitting perfectly with their lifestyle into their current behavior. Um, this this meaning to say that we still do not have English version. <laughs> it is coming. Yes. It is okay. But even on the Slovenian market, like which are open with you, which is it allows you a lot of like facilities <laughs> to your phone, right? But that's the difference. You have to go to the shop and you have to buy a SIM card there. So you lose this part. No, it's it's the it's like a technology. I mean, uh, it's like a match made in heaven. It's like a, it's, it's completely up our our alley, and we are uh, we are creating <clears throat> sorry content on on the dynamics about this. Uh, we are trying to educate people, and more is coming because this is uh, happening in the end. We have to charge for physical SIMs five euros, but it seems is, com it seems is completely free. So it's that's it. You know, you, you don't need to buy anything, and it's, there is a lot of you know besides not not going from home. So it's a big big opportunity. And then there is a lot of uh, also people in the community asking about smartwatches because they, they need an S in there as well. Uh, there are a lot of uses that are uh, possible. And uh, last but not least, what we want to uh, create this as kind of uh, humanizing the brand effect. So um, something that is coming as well is presenting you know the humans behind the, the digital app. Even though it's digital, it's technological, you know, there we are pretty much human in the essence. Uh, so we want to show this, you know, with the behind the scenes in the language. I'm also talking about how we uh, 
I will tackle some some of the project how what is the thinking and but yeah, again uh, um, coming soon coming soon okay I'm going to finish this this presentation by um, inviting you to follow test subscribe <laughs> 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 but definitely also watch this space uh, there might be various opportunities for uh, for your um, specialties and uh, you know as we grow we we grow wise words <laughs> <laughs> okay. cool. thank you everyone room for questions i've been noticing here on the camera that I think there's a jump short. Questions from the room, and then we're going to go to questions from Zoom. You know, you've been converting some of that. I have a shitload. I have a problem. I have a problem with the design. Did you do the design in the house? Like the 3D models and the animations and everything? Is that done in, in your studio or you outsourced? Out the outsourced. That's just, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, the illustrations are done by Lupa uh -huh. that are hundred meters away. Right, right, right. By, by, by chance, they're really cool guys. And right. the guts, we were, we gave them a super messy brief, mm -hmm. and they just did it. Is it something like that? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start with a really obvious one. Is it service designer at Strix? What was the role of the service designer in all of this? So, what was your role? Mm, when I joined, uh, they made me promise to always challenge and never be, you know, in a dark or commercial you know, Always challenge, always ask, don't be, don't, don't just settle for the telco way. So this is uh, this is basically what's what I think all of us that are outsiders are challenging what what is uh, the, the what's now the prevalent way of thinking, what the prevalent way of doing, um, and also bringing not just yes a fresh perspective, but probably the whole team that we were here. Uh, we build this. App, not following principles, but just intuitively, it felt like this is how how we should do it. No, and, and people just picking up on this. Okay, we are uh, you know lingo, not no jargon, and we are saying we are uh, using the seconds. Uh, we're going to say T, not V. Mm -hmm. So uh, then we we talked with the legal. And we say, you know what, our tone of voice is like that. So, all the terms and conditions, everything should be changed accordingly. So, uh, what do you mean? Yeah, it's like this. Like people can actually understand us. It's not just this simple, you know, TV, but also explaining what something means, you know, plain language. Uh, not, we, we couldn't do it every time, but I think we simplified as much as we could. So, uh, this is you know, it's not just self design, but it's about the mix of people, mix of this, uh, intuition that we brought to the table, and it's just work. And I think design as such, it was from here from the get go because of uh, Ilion, basically, if I can name it. So, how we do this. You know, it's, uh, I, I want to actually revert the question a little bit and ask the person that asked more or less what is service design because I there is a question that you know I think I'm gonna get uh, uh, a bad looks here in this room about it, but you know, uh service design is I think in a lot of terms you know that we use and so on. And then I, I like to just go this design and this is the process, and more or less the role of service design was everywhere, you know, we started from, from it. And I would say that it was really one of the biggest challenges was 
not to jump to conclusions, what are human nature, you know, you see a problem, you solve it. It's so simple. Why do we have to go research? Why do we have to wait? Why do we have to look for other non obvious solutions? Yeah, it's a problem. We have the solution. There you go. And, you know, but all we need the different steps in the design, it's really helps us, you know, really understand why we are making the decision that we're making and understand what is the payoff. There is always a payoff in every decision. But in this, in this, in this here, we need to give credit. You know, we mentioned good luck, but we also need to mention human act. There is a person, Luka Varanovic, that is a designer by heart, and he helped us a lot in the process from the beginning, collaborated pretty much in the whole thing a lot. So we gotta give a lot of credit to him, you know, he carried out also a lot of the, a lot of the research as well. So it was quite interesting to, to see this kind of collaboration from different professionals and professionals that we all understand the value of not just the professions. I think it's uh, going on what Anna said at the beginning, that was like the first <laughs> service design job ad that we've seen from larger companies in Slovenia. So for in Slovenian context, that's why okay, they're actually searching for somebody with the title service designer. So that's why I'm curious, as you said, service design is I'm thinking is just design, then why not search for just a designer, but a service designer? Like what are the skills or the knowledge or the tools or whatever that a service designer might bring? Compared to maybe the US or, or a graphic design, etc. The two set of energy experience. This is my short answer. Because service design, you know, is developing this kind of more specific tools that even though we you know um, some of them are uh, easy to use by different people, it is the understanding that you know um, um, we, we were looking for back then, you know, to, to have more detail on that kind of service employee, and that we also understood that this is not a one-time job. It's not something that, you know, you just go through and then you go home, but this is something that the hard part for people are coming out. It's like, you know, it's, it's easy you know, to sit behind the desk, you know, <coughs> something that is happening, but now when you go inside, this is the hard part that, you know, seeing all the variations of the journey. I don't know if anybody of you has ever seen or thought of creating a service blueprint for a telephone. Possible. Just think about the next stage. What is happening at every step? It is impossible. Was it easier to just make a new system than to adapt to the A1? Which is the same approach. We have a completely, a completely, completely new technological environment so that we are able to provide it. Other than this is bringing us you know, a few steps that we had before with the advancement of better activity. The competition now would like to answer us. It's going to take 10 years. So they might try to, you know, Copy, you know, the finding community do something similar, but in terms of what we're building, we are few steps already already in front of them, and this is something that you know it was really important to be in the next century. A question regarding you talk about the, the research. Uh, and I can see hints maybe of it, I guess, but you didn't specifically address it uh, how the research informed. You build the brand and how you build kind of like the design principles around the experience. And I was wondering how maybe that how how that was fed, or if you could just link it for us a bit in terms of kind of like, oh, we, we got these main insights and this is where we drew it. So it took it to this or to this. <clears throat> there are so many things. Uh, just maybe to be concrete. Oh. It was mentioned, but uh, the perception of telecom from people is uh, it's you know, either something a service is an institution or it's just it not existing. You know, it's it's it just is. Uh, uh, and people are, are just notice it when it doesn't work. So it's not about this is about. Um, Expect it to work, and if it works great, it's not a big pleaser, right? It just oh, okay, it's 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 uh, on its expectations. But to be even more maybe uh, concrete is we define uh, archetypes, um, six archetypes coming out of research, and this is guiding us in communication, guiding us in uh, in uh, how whom to target at this point of time and how to develop new products uh, who is going to be addressed to. So then it's going to be the whole, you know, not only what the product should look like, 
also how to communicate it and, and, and in the specifics what needs are there to be uh, integrated in the, uh, yeah, the solution. That just had a really annoying, frustrating experience with your parent company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, question to this is when you say human, we're humane, and uh, the, the health center, for example. So, uh, I recently noticed, like most of the either telco or uh, network providers, which is where we have the all three services, so plus services around it. Every time I look for support or my question being answered and I go to a website, there are chat bots, which tomorrow might be chat GPT, no GPT supported, yes. that will sound more human. Um, but then I'm talking to a computer and talking to a computer and talking. I only know for me for sure is that both there's a person in the back talking to me. So how do you, and I still feel that this is being that you're fully digital, how are you, what might be the challenges that you see behind, apart from what you do, you have somebody that's actually answering the chat, right in the back. What, what is the, the humane part of this brand or how you, you see the future of this um, aspect of being in the service? Sure. I think that the first, the way that we, at least I would approach this is that, what is your problem? And do you need to speak to a human? If you resolve your problem, not to be careful who you speak to. Because the end, we are not therapists, so we know we should not be just providing humans for people to speak to humans. However, at the current stage, we have humans and only humans because we would like to understand what people are looking for and so solve the problem before this. But if you did not need anybody else to act on your behalf, we should not provide this. This is contrary to our ground. This is why we're building it. Because you should be empowered. To be able to get the service and resolve everything that you can by yourself because we give you this power and not really ask anybody else look for anybody else that has better access better whatever to the system so that they talk to you they understand you and they act on your behalf if there's a problem with you for sure you know we have to resolve it we have the people and that's that and we're always going to be happy people it's not going to be a moment that we cannot not have people well, you know, specifically around this, you know, I'm not talking about the chatbot, but you know, I think that we should make it so easy that you're going to be able to resolve your problem in all this. I will, uh, I would like to challenge this, but I want to give <laughs> <laughs> an opportunity to somebody else to ask a question, but let's see this after uh, any okay. challenges. There's a question from the, our Zoom friends, so from Zalavia Lukicnik. How are you planning to approach the older generations? Are you planning to create the pool effect with your current human users, or are you planning a newspaper or Facebook like approach to include them into using the service that you're providing? Um, okay, I'm going to tackle the first about. And I'll ask for a bit later. Okay. Yeah. Other, other people. So we, maybe we don't. We don't consider older people. I mean, there are people that are less digitally savvy, and there, there are more. So there are a lot of uh, nuance there, there. But uh, <coughs> people that are maybe not digitally savvy, we call them easy goers, and uh, they they are usually the ones that, or the grandkids, kids, whoever is managing their their service. So we're going to we're not going to create new behavior, but we're going to empower the the kids or the grandkids to do it for for the for the easy goer. So it's we're not going to do. <clears throat> it's not about every time that you tackle one. I mean a new challenge. <clears throat> creating new behaviors is the hardest thing that you can do. So uh, you just ride the way the behavior is easy. Is is a much better way. Of course, you need to understand deeply what <clears throat> what this behavior is. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this this is what what uh, we don't have any concrete plans at this moment. But, you know, they are definitely on the map. Hi. Yeah. So, um, did you do any research? Like, how did the um, 
did the negative customer support affect the the customer satisfaction? Um, was it just a part of it, or or is it a big part of it? And what, um, if it is, like, uh, why haven't you thought about just doing the A one better? Then why did you um, do the the whole brand, the new brand and stuff? It, it's it seems harder that way. Okay, so I usually divide the question in two. So whether it was the effect of the support you know, on the customer satisfaction, I think we did not do much research because we have a lot of data. You know, so you can imagine as telecoms in the world of telecoms, it's a lot of information already around it, and it is inevitable. The support has the power to turn a negative case into a positive, and it is super powerful. You know, if you have like this support by human. That is resolving your that is resolving your problem. You might be frustrated, but you know they might approach you well. They might resolve your problem, and so on. And, you know this is many cases that this is something that that creates this kind of positive effect. And this is inevitably something that we are relying on on our brand, uh, and we are building it. And why we did not recreate uh, a one and did a one better? Why is not that? This is where I started. You know. Everything that Elon has built is amazing. It is the way that we appreciate it. And this is first what we're trying to tackle here better is the relationship with people. And this is something new. Uh, I will add to what Peru has said the previous question that we are not definitely planning to focus a lot on generations. We have a more for other generations. You know, we cannot cover everybody. We are a brand that is for definitely we see a lot of people that are really interested in and that would appreciate it. You know, A1, A1 is a convergent great operator that is not that. You know, A1 has great support, there's great network, and I'm, I'm saying this not only as an employee of A1, but objectively, you know, seeing this, I am really seeing it from a telecom from this side. I am fascinated with what telecoms have managed through the years to provide the average customer for such a price. And this is something that is, it is really fascinating, you know, the, the, the the, the loans that telecoms are getting to invest in so much infrastructure are so fascinating that they have to pay so many years after this. And this is so risky because, for example, if you were a telecom and you have to invest in 5G now, you're going to get such big loans, you know, to build all this infrastructure and create this service that, you know, what if in only one year this is cheap and you're going to invest in 5G? You know, this is really risky, complex business. That cannot be, cannot be, it, it is not so straightforward. So, uh, recreating a telecom is a really challenging big task. And, you know, I would not say that if we have to recreate tele uh, A1, it would be better. A1 is covering this for a reason and it is there for something specific. And we all want better customer support. You know, telecoms are notorious with the support that we're not getting. Yeah, but perhaps if telecoms were able to cover awesome customer support with the extended new customers home, we have to be more. And this is, you know, a failure that you see in different places. We are brand, we cover a specific segment. This is why we focus on the support that we have and we're creating this support. And we believe that, you know, in, in the people it's going to be appreciated and it's going to completely grow for now. And if I can go, uh, I'm not sure if I can do it. The road is going. <laughs> 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 so I hope that I hope that is a piece of elaborate uh, what will happen to Bob? Bob is a, a yes. brand that is aimed at the lower end or maybe younger or such. Well, I I cannot really answer as a day one executive. I'm responsible for Redo and I cannot really provide this information. I think that Bob so far among the people that are using Bob is still quite famous and they're quite satisfied. Okay, I want to yeah, uh, just uh, take time for the last question, uh, and then we're going to do a little wrap up so we can do more questions later on. But just yeah. for the wrap up the So, uh, let's see, uh, for, from my perspective, I would say from what you expect from telecoms in the last 15 years, they were like shooting market space, uh, internet took, took its life into life of its own and they're kind of like, it feels like, yeah, they're, they're a bit like we but the big promise of the telecom, I think, and I, I imagine one of your users are also thinking this, why, why the camera paying for optical connection, 30 euros or so, when I can have 5G, which is just as good and, and should provide for this streaming and support, and I don't need this anymore. And I, I saw that you're promising unlimited 
5G on your packets, and uh, you do not specify what the sentiment means because it is notorious. This fair usage clause it is usually included that makes sure that you cannot really rely on it for your home consumption. Uh, and uh, perhaps this explains why you have so many people who ask questions, uh, customers, but I'm just thinking this is probably one of the big breaks that we can expect from telephones in future weeks. Will 5G make, make obsolete the optical connections? Or, or for at least for a regular consumer, 5G should be enough. It's fast enough. It, it has the latency. There is no reason for us to pay one subscription for, for the utility that is very expensive and dumb. How do you uh, see this? I mean, I'm sure you have thought about this. You have seen this. You must have approached that you don't want users to use this full time for their for everything because you probably not make money on it. How do you see this? Well, really, really good question. Thanks. And this is also referring to the person next to you. Sorry, I, I don't know. But no, he's our target. This is what, what you really we do. Uh, the question about the consumption is really fair. So, why would you not specify? Because this is completely unlimited for anyone that is using them for their own consumption on their mobile device. This is not for home usage. Spoiler alert, they might be something soon. Uh, and this is something that I was about to say that we comply with your view of the world and where the development should be going. And this is something that we need to do direction. But the current offer is for mobile subscription. This is why we have we have uh, this way of explaining that it's you can use it as much as humanly possible. If you start connecting the machine to the machine, either LT services, other stuff to use for home consumption, you are just going to get a different product later that you can still use it. But this product, what we have for currently, is just from a mobile situation. But if I buy this package now, I'll go home and connect a Wi Fi uh, hotspot and connect my router to my phone and start streaming for the Netflix, this is, this is okay. Try and see. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, honestly, no, this kind of uh, exploitation, we have we have markers on this, this why it's why okay, we say humanly possible. So we will know when it's machine to machine. If you want to use it for your subscription of your mobile, we will know it's fine. You can use that link when you don't have other options, you know, some steps, but you know, if you get like 10 devices just on its own, this is not something that we can come back. As I said, you know, you're more than welcome. Uh whether we can get the product specifically for you. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to wrap up the official part. And we can continue the conversation later. Sorry for the last questions being asked now. Just want to uh, thank you again for having us here uh, today. Uh, just a little announcement right now is the time to anybody want to share something in terms of invite other people from the community to an event, to see something you're doing, to try out a product, to, does anybody have a job announcement? Uh, anywhere also people on online. Shy, quiet, yeah. or <laughs> this, so anybody on Zoom? No, no. Um, yeah, <coughs> yeah I kind of have to go better than here. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. But I don't know if we can do that. That's fine. Don't go there. So, here I do have an announcement. Uh, for next time, for the next drinks, no, not for the next drinks, for inviting people to other. No, not. not no. Now. But for the next drinks, yes. Okay, so the next drinks are going to be on the 20th of April. And this time we're going to host uh, a service designer uh, who's from Argentina, but moved to Finland. And she works at the Ministry of the Interior. Um, and she's a service designer there. She was my mentor when I was doing my MBA. So she's going to join us and talk about service design in the public sector. Stay tuned for a specific topic that we're still uh, discussing about. Yeah. And just quickly check if somebody uh, from the from the community online. Yeah. 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 Then maybe stop recording. Thank everybody. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us, and we can continue the conversation. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.